night sky or a beautiful sunrise. There's so much they hold, and just like the old stars, I see that you've come so far to be right where you. How bold is your soul? I won't give up on us, even if the skies get rough. I'm giving you all my love. I'm still looking up, and when you're needing. Patiently waiting to see what you find. Cause even the stars they burn, some even come to the earth, and we've got a lot to learn, and God knows where. be someone who walks away so easily I'm here to stay and make the difference that I can make our differences they do a lot to teach us how to use the tools and gifts we got yeah we got a lot at stake and in the end you are my friend and yes we did intend for us to work we didn't break we didn't burn we had to learn how to bend Without our world caving in, I had to learn what I got and what I'm not and who I am. And I won't give up on us, even if the skies get rough. I'm giving you all my love. I'm still. Skies get rough. I'm giving you all my love. I'm still looking up. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's meditation. I invite you to sit down or lay down and make yourself comfortable. Close your eyes and take a deep breath in, focusing on your heart center. Breathe out and give yourself the space needed to do so in the pace that feels best for you throughout this whole meditation. Imagine you're in a misty, foggy forest and you're walking a trail that looks as if it has no end. You've been walking this forest all around for a long time. Notice how do you feel? Are you tired? It's okay to release any fear coming up and give yourself safety and reassurance. 
Notice that you have been here in this forest before and continue walking the path in front of you. As you walk, you notice a huge stone in the middle of the path, twice your size, which you cannot trespass from the sides. Notice how do you feel? Is there anything coming up? You have the power to remove this stone without touching it. Command it to move and it will move. As you see the stone dissolve, you notice around you, the fog is also slowly disappearing. You can take a moment to recognize the true power of you. What you choose becomes. As you continue walking, you encounter other obstacles, but by the power of your choice, in love, you take every step with courage and reassurance that the way out will appear. And so it does. Look right in front of you. There is an exit road beaming with light from the sun shining through. You can walk towards it. Notice how you feel. Full of love and content, you've now arrived on the other side of your challenge. Take a moment to look around. Feel the sun shining upon you and the warmth it brings to your body. When you look behind you, the path you came from disappeared. In its place, there is a beautiful, gigantic tree full of life and vibrance. This is what your love grew in the forest, it transformed it. Take a deep breath in and bring your attention to your present moment in your room. And when you feel ready, you can open your eyes. Thank you and Namaste. Hello, my name is Arshia. I'm a student of Jeff and Shilya. Today's card deck reading will be done by me. The Starseed Oracle is the card deck that I have chosen by Rebecca Campbell. Uh, there's a specific reason again that I chose this because uh, these card decks um, directly lead you to the divine will. So when you are going through such a uh, darkness it is better to allow the divine light to be uh, put on it so I felt guided towards this and the cards are already pre-shuffled the first card I received is forge don't follow pave a new path be the leader you wish you had so as you can see this card it's like such beautiful energy it's a new universe itself and she's exploring and um you can see that here uh, there's a new world there's a new universe so you must be wondering like you know oh okay uh this is uh when there's so much darkness how this right so yes that is correct you are the creator of your life you have a choice to get up from that darkness because every end of a tunnel is light so you're just walking through that tunnel and facing all those difficult uh, things but every end of the tunnel has a new beginning and has this new beautiful world so uh, you cannot wait for anybody to rescue you your twin flame or others to rescue you during this process especially when this process happens you might feel like a victim you might be beaten down 
you might be crashing but it is your choice to take the leadership to get up stand up for yourself be the leader uh, of your life be the hero of your life and get up and walk move forward right don't be afraid to go explore the other end of the tunnel so that's what it's showing uh, pave a new path you have to forge the new path nobody else can create in your life but you so that's uh, the truth right you have the choice to create in your life so the next card is the great serving mass energy uh, you can see there's conflict here so there's anger conflict and yes this is exactly what uh, you one would go through during the dark night of the soul where there's anger there's conflict uh, you would be seeing all your wounds all the upsets there might be anxiety there might be depression uh, and at this time you have a choice again whether are you going to choose love or are you going to harden your heart and shut down yes you it, the process could be very painful but uh, there is a choice are you going to bring love and soften to love anyways are you going to choose love during this process and uh, anyways are you going to forgive so there's a lot of forgiveness needed here towards self towards others and just understanding uh, coming from a place of compassion so that you can end this uh, conflict within you the conflict is always within right and you can take your power back by ending this conflict and seeing all your fears and facing it just feeling it will give you relief uh, not giving power to this uh, energy knowing that they are just come up for healing it's all risen up to the surface because you cannot take it anymore it's come for cleaning it's come for purification so it's okay to look into that plus it's an invitation right to the new world uh, it's an invitation for you to uh, pave your new path like this card is saying uh, for once you know you don't have to be a sheep you can be the leader of your life right you can create all the desires in your life so that's why the dark night of the soul has arise so that you break through it right so yeah anyways choose love and soften up your heart there that's what this card is showing and the last card is jump in uh, it's andromedian energy adventure say yes to change yes it's a big change and andromedian energy is uh, always up for adventure even though uh, adve it, the adventure might look uh, dangerous or scary or mostly they hold a lot of courage and uh, the energy the Andromedian energy holds a lot of courage and they surf through any tide with calmness so uh, it's like just jump in just dive in uh, into the healing into feeling your feelings into love when you're going through a dark phase is what it's showing and uh, surf the tide knowing that you will get through surf the tide with courage you need a lot of courage here to go ahead and walk forward in this journey uh, when you are uh, being awakened to this whole process when you are knowing that yes you uh, are being invited into this process of healing into this process of self-love which is the twin flame journey right that's why it's a new path basically uh, it's not something that is uh, that has been there uh, on earth but now it is paved and uh, it is available so you can take support you don't have to just 
jump in and take the leap without support so you can take support here where uh, you know it's saying that andromedian energy means surfing the tide from a place of calmness so that's why i said support you know when you're diving in make sure that you have somebody to hold the space for you like coaching coaching really helps to move through your a uh, dark night of the soul from a place of uh, peace from a place of calmness then uh, surfing the tide would be easier it would be more adventurous because you'll be going and claiming all this beautiful world your union your uh, life purpose your harmonious energy all of that right and it is worth to love yourself through it instead of uh getting stuck there and hardening up there right so yeah it's time to uh whoever is going through this process this phase know that this is what is behind it so you can trust and uh, walk forward so that's what's come up for this card reading thank you so much god bless Hello everybody and welcome to our Sunday service today. My name is Glenn Campbell and it is my pleasure to introduce the sermon by Alexandra and Lorenzo on the topic of the dark night of the soul. And something that really stood out for me in the sermon today was just the sense of having the concept demystified but also allowing for space to accept what the concept has shown up as and what it could potentially show up as, but also kind of allowing space to lean into the process of what the dark night of the soul actually is. And I think but they touch on quite a few points in terms of what the dark night of the soul actually entails and how it comes about as a result of sometimes an inadvertent choice and sometimes a very deliberate choice. But at all times, a choice nonetheless. So I feel like it's quite important for us to sit back and relax into the understanding that in one way or another, we have called in the process. And that it is a level of acceleration of our healing journey. It is truly a sense of awakening to the truth at the core. And that sometimes that awakening process might not be as simple or as easy as what we may have thought it could or would be. And I think Alexandra just touched on something very important in the sense that we have called in the process. I feel like oftentimes we call in our experiences so that we can transcend it. But one of the things that's probably important for us to remember throughout the teachings of Twin Flames Ascension School the golden thread is that you have to love something completely in order to transcend it. And so, again, this just is a reminder that in that space of the dark night of the soul and just even that cave of fear that Jeff and Shalia share with us, the concept of the cave of fear that Jeff and Shalia share with us, that we have chose to walk through that dark night of the soul. We have chosen to walk through that cave of fear to the other side. 
And oftentimes we need to remember that it's something that is there for our ascension. And we probably didn't realize what an ascension journey actually is. And it's okay to acknowledge that. It's okay to accept that we didn't know what we didn't know. And to accept that we are learning to know what that really means. And so one of the things that stands out for me in Lorenzo and Alexandra's sermon is the very specific sense that the overall process leads us deeper into faith in God and in our relationship with God. And so I feel like it's an opportune time to just extend the invitation to allow the message to be demystified and the concept to be demystified but also to keep an open mind that it may not necessarily look the way we think it should look, or even look the way we, we thought it would look. And it's important for us to remember that it's for our growth. It's for, our, for the purification of our consciousness. It's literally the process of cleaning up. And this does not say that any one of us or any one of you is a mess. It's just that sometimes we do need to ensure that we focus on the cleanup. We focus on removing the obstacles that present themselves to us that we didn't know were there and that it's okay to accept that we didn't know that those things were there. And I like that they share the example from Shalia in her twin flame journey and her choice for an accelerated process. And also the encouragement that it really is up to you. The pace at which you move is literally your choice. And that it's okay to choose a pace that's compassionate and loving. Because they are, again, you know, parts of ourselves that we may not have met yet or may not have seen in a certain way or need to stop seeing in a certain way. And that all requires work. All of that requires us to suspend our level of judgment of ourselves and our experiences and the process that we're going through and to allow ourselves the space to open up and to accept what is as it is. And that doesn't mean living in it and taking up residence. It means unpacking it and understanding where you're at, where it's taking you, and how that can happen. And I think the teachings of Union and Jeff and Shalia's teachings specifically help us along that way and along that journey. So it is upon us, it is incumbent upon us to open our minds to the process. It's also probably a very good and very healthy choice to choose the compassionate route for the reason that we do not want to overwhelm ourselves. I also love the example that they share from Yogananda around the test of faith and literally what the gift is in relation to who God is to us and whether we choose to continue loving God regardless of what may or may not happen with the gift. 
So I'd like to invite you to open yourself up to looking at the dark night of the soul of the soul from a different perspective, but also in a new light. I'd also like to invite you to donate or tithe to continue to help us spread the message of unionism to the world as your donations and tithes continue to help to produce these sermons that reach far and wide. So thank you again for joining us. Please do enjoy the sermon and I will see you at the end. Hello, I'm Lorenzo. And I am Alexandra. And we are Executive Ministers of Union. And today we will be doing our Sunday service. Let us begin with our three opening ohms and with our opening prayer. You can follow along in your heart or aloud. Now for our opening prayer. I am the only child of God, forever part of Him. I am created by Him in perfection, and there I always remain. My mind is my sanctuary where I keep His holy creation sacred. I will only allow in His voice. I will only accept His word. Today I will hear the word of God. I surrender myself to his teachings through his divine channel. I will honor what he has spoken and accept it as his will. I will be obedient to his word, for this is my salvation. In Christ's name, um, amen. amen. Welcome. We're going to speak today about the dark night of the soul. Yes, and what's the unionist perspective on the dark night of the soul? Mm -hmm. I think many that start the spiritual journey or their ascension journey start with the so-called and the dreaded dark night of the soul. Ooh, yes. And I think like we have gone through like our own dark, sign, dark night of the soul and I, we know many people who has, right? And it's always this experience with, you know, there's intense suffering, intense pain and your whole life is being turned upside down most likely, you don't know what's happening, you don't know how to handle it, you don't know how to manage it, and suddenly you're in this land, new land with new awarenesses, new things for you to learn, and it, it can feel a bit daunting, right? And we will talk about, first of all, why that happens, why people have to experience the dark nights of the soul, why it seems like the spiritual awakening has to start with this intense suffering, right? And I think the first thing that comes to mind to this is related to, you know, it, it's not called awakening for no reason. It's called the process of awakening because we're asleep. We are asleep to knowing who we truly are. And in that dream, in that maya, in that illusion that we live in, we create a certain construct of reality that we believe that is based on, well, dreams, maya, illusions, things that are not actually real. So the, the dark night of the soul comes actually like a moment where we experience that truth in a very, yeah, contrasting way, I should say. And um, it is meant to do exactly that, to snap us open from, from the dream that we're dreaming, be it in whichever way we are, we are dreaming. And for most of us here, we can relate to the 
to the Twin Flame journey and how we we started our dark night of the souls when it comes to our Twin Flame journey. But people experience the dark night of the souls in many ways, right? It's not. It's related to probably each and every area of your life that opens you up to seeing the truth and mm-hmm. opens you up to finding yourself, basically, and finding who you truly are. So, in a sense, is the dark night of the soul a bad thing? Hmm. A good question. No, I don't think it is. It's not actually a bad thing. It's actually a really good and healthy thing that happens for you, spiritually speaking. Speaking. We are only perceiving it as being a scary or um, frightening experience because, again, and up until that point, especially when it happen- happens for the first time, hint, you might go through multiple dark nights of the soul mm-hmm. uh, in your spiritual awakening journey. Especially when it happens for the first time, again, it, it can be such a, a life-changing experience that it leaves you, you, um, you know, kind of naked. Don't know what to do. You're searching. And most of us, you know, here resolve to searching on the internet. Well, what's happening? Why is this dream frame thing? Why is this person, you know, awakening these feelings inside of me that I haven't felt before, why I feel so intense feelings, but at the same time, so many bad feelings, right? Mm -hmm. It feels like suddenly you're being thrown in a different world, different dimension, right? But, you know, um, here in this community, we do have the support for people to go through these experiences and have compassion for when it happens, especially for the first time, because it's like, Again, can be a frightening experience. But I think that what I wanted to focus on, on this um, subject is how can you make the, the dark night of the soul become like an easier experience for you? And uh, what is the actual truth about the dark night of the soul? Right? Because mm-hmm. we see from your divine perspective, right? it's actually a good thing that you're awakening to find yourself to ask questions about who you truly are. These are really healthy things to do. And you can have this kind of attitude or how to say mental state um, without having to have the contrasting experience. Most likely people have that contrasting experience is because they won't accept change until they go through like a lot of pain and suffering. And the truth is that the dark night, com- dark night of the soul comes as an encouragement for us to change, right? We, we have to change radically, most likely, in, in each and every, in, in the area of the life that we have been awakened into by this dark night of the soul. For example, when it comes to your twin flame, once you meet your twin flame, ain't really going to go back to soulmates, and that's like a really, like, how to say, like a really deep thing to happen when you you were looking for your lover, you were looking for, you know, the person to spend the rest of the, your life with, and you have this soulmate, you know, pool of people to choose from, but suddenly there is this person that catches your interest that makes everything else just go away, and it's like, mm-hmm. No, no, no. Only this person. That's a really big thing. That's a really impactful thing for your soul to finally surrender into realizing that there's only one person for you, your dream flame. Mm -hmm. And actually finding that person and being able to live with that person, it's even more changing. It's a transformational change, right? And it's, it's, again, it's a good change, right? Now, why does the dark so- dark night of the soul happening in the first place? Besides the fact that we spoke that people don't usually change unless they suffer, why does this still have to happen, right? Well, it is because it's actually a choice that we're making. Even if like it might not seem like a conscious choice, maybe for us, for some of us, it's like a conscious choice. And we knew, I'm done 
with these relationships, with soulmates that don't fit me and I want the one for me, right? And that propelled you possibly into finding a false twin flame and having one of the worst experiences of your life. You know, like you're, you, you, you made this promise, God, please, the only person for me. And you, you get into this situation. You're like, oh my God, what's happening? So it might be like that. It might be like a very conscious choice that you're making to, to call in this drastic change in your life. And sometimes I think like some of us call in this, um, changes in a very, I would say innocent way. Like you, 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 I know like this, I felt like this is how it was for me. It was like, oh, I wish I would be with the one, you know, and I didn't really, I think like me consciously, I didn't take seriously what I was choosing or I was, you know, wishing for, but. Or, or you didn't knew the gravity of what you're calling in. Yes. I didn't knew the gravity of what I called in. And I think honestly, if, if I didn't have that innocence and I would knew like the, maybe like the, the suffering, maybe back then I wouldn't go through it without like being really aware of like the, the, the reward at the end, you know, at the other side of the dark night of the soul, we're going to happen what happens after the dark night of the soul. Right. So if you're going to, have like a, a genuine conversation with somebody you're like oh you want your ultimate lover well you're gonna have to suffer you're gonna have to have five false partners and you're gonna learn from each of them you know and you know you in the end you're gonna learn all the lessons and you're gonna have the person you're gonna be like oh my god that's like that sounds awful <laughs> to go through you know again without knowing what comes at the other side you know and we, you might be discouraged and I feel like, in a sense, this is why we are, you know, unconsciously making these choices. And in my case, it was like a very conscious but innocent choice of, oh, I want to be with my perfect person. And then my whole life turned upside down, mm -hmm. all around, right? Um, because I was calling in something really deep. And... In, in our innocence, we know, I think, like, that's the right thing for us. Like, is the right thing for you to be with your twin flame? Is the absolute most loving thing for you? Is the absolute most loving mm -hmm. thing for you to have, you know, abundance, to have your perfect health, to have your joy in your life, however you want to look at that, right? But again, we might not be aware of what we what we call in, in the sense of what we want to to what we have to like heal in order for us to permanently achieve that, right? Mm -hmm. So truly and honestly, what happens in the dark night of the soul is simply just um, an awakening and a lot of blocks that come up for you to heal. And mm -hmm. if you are equipping yourself with the appropriate tools to move through whatever is happening, then you'll see that even if like, I think like as you grow into your spiritual journey, you can you will still experience dark nights of the souls, meaning moments in which you awaken to something within yourself that's really going to change your life forever. It's going to change that you, the way that you see yourself or the way that you see your reunion or your life purpose or anything. But it's not going to be so contrasting anymore because you know how to handle it and you become kind of more experienced in the journey, in the awakening, so that it's, you, you kind of calm down and you relax into the process and you also have the awareness that this is normal. When you call in a big change in your life, there's going to have to be all of this healing and upheaval in your life related to it. And it's not a bad thing. It's actually a really good thing because it helps you manifest your dreams and desires. So truly and honestly, the dark night of the soul is just a transformation that you go through to achieve all of your dreams. Mm -hmm. I'd like to say a rebalancing of your life. Yeah, it's re a rebalancing of your life. It's you getting to know your true divine self and letting go of the illusions of who you thought you were or yeah, how you, like false perceptions about life and abundance, God, your twin flame, reality in general, and settling into the truth. And that's, again, a really healthy thing 
to go to. Mm -hmm. Now, again, does it mean that it has to be upside down all around? Everything in your life is uprooted and upended? Well, no. But why does it happen like that? It's, again, because in the beginning, there might be like a lot of things in your life that you have built on a false foundation or a false understanding of life. So, therefore... Mm -hmm. As you move through the process of healing, you're going to bring more and more truth in your foundation. So whenever the next wave hits, you're not going to lose everything, right? Because everything that was built was built on truth, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, everything that will is built on truth will stay true, will be unshakable within yourself and in your consciousness, and everything that is not will be shaken up in these moments. Not because um, they might not be true, but maybe you do have some doubt to heal, more faith to grow, or you have to face that maybe there is a lie that you're harboring within yourself, a piece of ego that needs to just go away. And as you embrace that process of healing, um, again, you're going to build your foundation higher and higher and higher, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, that sounds about right. Mm -hmm. And I know you had an example. Do you want to bring that example with your Gananda? Well, I think like I wanted to talk about Shelia and her mm -hmm. false twin flame experience first because I feel this kind of ties in perfectly to what we, mm -hmm. we spoke so far. Yeah. Because in um, and I love that Shelia doesn't doesn't say that this was a dark night of the soul. I was rereading this part of the book recently where she was sharing her false twin flame experience and she doesn't mention it like a dark night of the soul but it was like um, a place where she experienced you know a lot of you know suffering pain and didn't know why but I really love that she shared that before uh, meeting her false twin flame she had a conversation with her you know spirit guides and was like I want my twin flame Please, you know, like, let's not uh, postpone this any longer. And I want the fastest way possible, right? And, you know, her spirit guides gave her, you know, the option to go a bit slower because it would be more compassionate. But, of course, it would take longer. And Shalia chose the fast route. So if you yourself are choosing the fast route, you'll have to be aware that you're going to have to face everything at a much more accelerated pace. So it's nothing wrong with either pace that you're choosing. You're in control of your own pace in your healing journey. It's just that mm -hmm. you have to kind of understand what you're getting yourself into, right? And this is something that I mentioned with myself. Something as innocent of like, oh, I just want my perfect person for me. That seems very simple, caused a lot of spiritual awakening for me. So I can arrive in that space. And, mm -hmm. you know, for Shalia as well, it was... Um, her experience with the false twin flame was, um, you know, hurtful, but everything that she needed in order to heal each and everything that was, you know, keeping her twin, true twin flame, Jeff, away. Mm -hmm. So it might seem this like a, 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 like a dark, night soul, dark night of the soul situation that happens when you have a false twin flame or you move through the breakup from a false twin flame. Because there are a lot of things to clear, you know, there have a lot of things to, to, to face within yourself. But again, at the end of the road, you know, when you see the light at the end of the tunnel with this healing, there will be a great reward. And in Shadia's case, it was, you know, her, um, her true twin flame, Jeff. And I, I always go back to this story because I feel like it's so inspirational. It's so... Mm -hmm. You know, it's so, I don't know, like it's it's a role model that I would, I wish to follow, you know, and that's why I'm, you know, following these teachings as well. I really love how uh, Jeff and Shelly are approaching their spiritual journey and their life in general. And um, yeah, I'm happy to learn from them in this space. Yeah. And again, it speaks about the, the, the power of your choice and the power of what you're calling in and again i think like most of us when we call in our twin flames we don't realize what we're calling in and this is why 
we don't fully understand and maybe there is a bit of confusion about why am I experiencing so many things that are so disturbing in my life right now when all that I really want is just that perfect person for me. But it's it's that that call and it's that desire that you know, like kind of makes you like choose that and makes you like gives you the strength as well I feel to go through all of these challenges in your twin flame journey or your spiritual mm-hmm. journey in in general right mm-hmm. yeah like to add something not really I feel like you're very complete without your communicating <laughs> yeah and another thing that I wanted to to bring up about this was an example that I um, listened from um, one of you, Ganan, that's like students. Um, I heard it in a in a YouTube video they had, like in one of their sermons, and I found like a um, um, an online source to kind of read from for this particular sermon. But basically, the background story is that Yogananda, you know, came to America and built these these uh, temples, you know, all over the United States. And there is one one particular temple that she really, really loved and felt like it was one of the best temples, right, that um, she had at that time. And it it completely sank into the sea. And I'm, I'm going to read from the source that I found what happened and what was Yogananda's kind of conversation with God about what what occurred in that in that space. Mm-hmm. So the temple was the golden gold, golden lotus temple, and um, the fall, the sinking happened in April uh, nine hundred and forty two, and the kind of the heading of this uh, article says that God gives a reason, right? So this is what it says. Before the temple went, Paramahansa Ji asked God why he was allowing the evil war karma and Satan to destroy it. He got the reply. The reply. Satan is trying to test you, your love for me. You love the temple so much, its loss will prove whether you become angry with me and thereby show you love the temple more than me or whether you love me just the same, ignoring the lo- loss of the temple. Besides, God told Paramahansa Ji, the test of Satan is my test. The golden lotus temple was a personal gift to you. Now that it's taken away from you, grieve not. Then Paramahansa Ji was inspired to write the following prayer to God. In sickness or health, in sorrow or joy, in poverty or prosperity, in disaster or security, in death or life, I stand unalterably, immutably, unchangeably, loyal, devoted, and loving to thee, my Heavenly Father, forever, forever, and forever. Mm. Amen. Amen. And it goes to show in the article afterwards how um, Yogananda, after this event happened in the following year, erected like another like two temples, so not one but two. <laughs> and um, I was really inspired by this conversation of like why, why challenges like this kind of happen in our lives that can awaken like a, a dark night of the soul situation. And I feel like in these moments, kind of how God was talking with uh, Yogananda here was that our faith in God is being tested as well. Mm -hmm. Our faith in, 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 and our faith and devotion to, to God himself. And sometimes it might seem like maybe unfair or unjust. And as I said, like, will you get angry on me because this happened? Will you blame me for this? Or you will still love me the same? I feel like that's like a really great lesson for as you go kind of um, on your spiritual journey and challenges still seem to happen. And maybe your twin flame is not coming home despite despite how many mirror exercises you have done and how diligently you're healing and how diligently you're listening to God, you know. 
I feel like in the beginning of the journey, like the dark night of the soul is like for your awakening. But once you kind of get how the game is being played and what to do, I feel like situations like these that can be like a dark night of the soul moment are simply to deepen into your faith in God and to kind of like really test that relationship that you have with God. Because we know that um, our harmonious dream frame union is actually just our harmonious union with God. And in you pursuing this um, relationship with God in this space, you know, you will be tested, you know. God is going to test you. And you might feel like, oh, the evil Satan is testing you. Or, yeah, you are tested to see what are you going to choose in a moment that are the hardest in your life. Are you going to succumb and blame God? Or are you going to continue to love God unconditionally despite the the challenges, despite the um, apparent unfairness that might happen in your journey? And from my experience and what I see is that whenever we choose to have faith in God, whatever the perceived mm -hmm. loss that happened was, it's going to come back to us multiplied. And I love how in this case, Yogananda afterwards built two, two temples uh, instead in the following year, not just, not just one that he, he lost, uh, she lost in that experience or was lost in that experience in general. Right. So, I think that was um, like a big lesson to kind of conclude this this um, sermon. Sermon. It's the darkness of the soul is for your own awakening that you call in, and as you go deeper in your spiritual journey, all that you have to focus on is in your, on your faith, your faith in God, and your devotion and loyalty to God, and God will be there for you no matter how challenging the situation is so buckle up <laughs> yep. buckle up in your um yeah just journey journey fade and the the least you resist the change and what's happening in your life the more you can enjoy the journey mm -hmm. exactly good right let us conclude then with our closing prayer and our three closing ohms. And again, you can follow along in your minds or in your hearts or aloud. <laughs> Good. Father, I accept your word into my heart. I will honor your will in my life and I will follow you without hesitation anywhere you ask. I know you guide me into your heart where I belong. I accept that you are everywhere and your teaching is in all things. God, I know you provide me clarity in these teachings of union that I may be forever in union with you. I accept that you are in me as you are in my brother. I will not deny my brother your word and will share your teachings with him in any way you ask and only as you ask. For when I share my salvation with him, I fully claim my salvation and return to you with him. In Christ's name, Om, Om. Amen. Amen. Speaking this prayer in your heart means that you have accepted that you are on a path of awakening through your true divine nature. This is what it means to be a unionist. Follow the teaching of union with God wherever you find them and purify our consciousness into perfect union with your Creator. And now for our closing omens.
Thank you for joining us today. We wish you a wonderful week. We'll see each other next time. Namaste. Hello again, everybody. And thank you for joining us. I hope that you enjoyed the sermon by Alexandra and Lorentia on the dark night of the soul and what that experience really entails and also what you can choose for it to entail. But also hope that it demystified why sometimes parts of the journey feel so much more intense than at other times and also that to remember that there are places that you're probably calling in more love than you've ever experienced before. And so it might feel more intense, allowing that love in into those spaces. I also hope that as you've gone through the sermon, you also allow your experience and your journey to become lighter as you gain deeper understanding or deeper clarity of what may be transpiring on your journey. I'd also like to invite you to visit our unionism.org page where you will find all our past sermons, music, meditations, and card readings. You'll also be able to donate or tithe to contribute to the Church of Union's message to the world. We'd also like to invite you to like and subscribe to our Church of Union YouTube channel, where you will find all our past sermons, as well as any other live discussions that have happened in our Unionism Spiritual Discussion Group on Facebook. Also directly after our Sunday service, and after church tea time is hosted in our Unionism Spiritual Discussion Group on Facebook. And essentially, it is a panel discussion by a group of unionists on today's Sunday sermon, as well as their learnings and key takeaways from the sermon today. We thank you again for joining us, and we wish you an epic day going forward. Thank you, everybody.